Hi, I'm Tricia, an organic gardener. I grow organically for a healthy and safe food supply, for a clean and sustainable environment, for an enjoyable and rewarding experience. Gardening in raised beds is an old technique that never seems to go out of style. The benefits of gardening in raised beds are plentiful. Good drainage, the soil warms up quicker, and usually you have a little bit more productivity. Raised beds can be as simple as a mound of dirt about three to four feet wide or as elaborate as my redwood raised beds. Framed beds should be at least six inches high. Mine are two feet tall, which is great to make a bigger root zone or if you're gardening from a wheelchair. For maximum sun exposure, lay out your garden beds for low growing crops in a north-south direction. For trellised crops or vines, it's recommended that you do an east-west direction. Position your beds away from the roots of big trees or shrubs and make sure you have full sun and enough room in between the beds for your wheelbarrow or garden cart. Your bed should be no more than four feet across. You want to be able to reach across and work in them comfortably and you don't want to step in them. Your beds can be as long as you like. 25 feet is ideal because most fertilizer application rates are by the 100 square feet. Four feet by 25 feet, that's pretty easy math for me. For long beds like that, it's important to have support stakes every six feet or so. Once you've decided on your location, lay out your bed. Strings and stakes or field paint are great options. Now it's time to choose your materials. You can make raised beds out of recycled building materials such as cinder blocks, bricks, wood, and composite decking. A word of caution about lumber. Don't use lumber that's treated with either creosote or pentachlorophenol. Those are toxic. Untreated redwood and cedar will last the longest. There are also kits available like this mini farm box that are easy to install. Once you've chosen your location and your materials, loosen the soil and remove all vegetation. A digging fork or broad fork is the best tool for this job. If you have a gopher problem like I do, put down gopher wire and then lay weed fabric on top of the wire to prevent weeds from growing into your beds. Gopher wire is better than aviary wire. The holes are smaller and it's heavier duty and will not rot out as soon as aviary wire. These mini farm boxes are great. They come in tables, rolling containers, or beds as large as four feet by eight feet by 17 inches. These are made of attractive, untreated cedar. And don't worry about irrigation. There are kits available for the mini farm box. Another option, especially if you're using recycled wood, are these decorative garden embraces. Simply slide any two inch lumber into the brace and embrace your garden. Embraces are a great option because it's easy to change the size and location of your raised bed later. Out of the box, the embraces are not rusted, but they will rust over time. If you don't like the rustic look, just paint them before installing with a rust-proof paint. For a really inexpensive raised bed, use these 300-gallon smart pots. For a 12-inch rooting zone, use this big bag bed. The smart pots last from about three to five years. Just unfold them and fill them up with good potting soil. Soil for raised beds can usually be purchased in bulk from a landscape supply company. If you don't have that resource, try a mix of one part compost or other organic matter, one part perlite, and two parts soil. The mini farm boxes, the embraces, and the smart pots are great options if you have a small space, a patio garden, or if you're renting your home. If you move, you can take your garden with you. So build a raised bed and grow organic for life.